Prime Minister, the Most Honourable, Honourable Dr. Hewitt Minnis, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The national COVID-19 picture in the Bahamas has mirrored the global pandemic. Each phase, beginning March 2020, has presented with unique challenges across our archipelago, given our many international ports of entry and our tourist-dependent livelihood. The medical teams and local health structures have responded to the pandemic in a commendable manner. At this point, we have identified new models of care for addressing the pandemic. We are currently in a third wave of the COVID-19 virus infections, and I am pleased to report that the monitoring system has been strengthened significantly over time, and we now have increased skills, more resources, and greater capacity to address the changing presentation of this COVID-19 in our islands. Further, we now have a new opportunity with the COVID-19 vaccine to manage this pandemic. The dashboard provides an update on the progress of the national COVID-19 vaccine campaign. Starting today, this weekly dashboard will track the total number of first and second doses administered nationally and by island. Other data will be added as needed. This afternoon, I'm very pleased to report that as of Friday, the 21st of May, a total of 50,242 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine have been administered to Bahamians and residents on New Providence, Grand Bahama, and throughout the family islands. The total number of doses include 44,226 first doses and 6,016 second doses. 4,893 of the second doses have been administered in New Providence and 1,123 second doses in Grand Bahama. Following a successful rollout in the Family Islands last month, we expect to start administering second doses in the islands during the month of June in accordance with the recommended eight to 12 week spacing between doses. As you can see from the dashboard, first doses of the vaccine have been administered on a total of 14 islands and keys. At this time, I wish to acknowledge the major contributions of the Rhode Island National Guard, the Ring, and the Air Ambulance Services for their support in the Family Island rollout. I would also like to recognize the Royal Bahamas Defense Force for providing security for the vaccines and staff over the entire vaccination campaign. Many islands have not reported cases of COVID-19 for many days. We are pleased with the islands whose residents have come out in large numbers to receive the vaccine. In particular, the residents of Grand Bahama should be congratulated. The data show that the vaccine campaign there is working. If you follow the track of the yellow case, the incident and cumulative cases by Epi Week. To date, hospitalizations are at a low level and there are no ICU admissions. The national COVID-19 vaccination campaign has been ongoing now for nine weeks. It began in mid-March with a distribution plan by priority groups. This included healthcare workers, persons 60 years of age and older, and members of the uniform branches. You would see that the uptake among the 60 and above age group was very strong 
that's your green, green line. We see here that the, the, the beginning of the campaign, this was 52%. However, in the past week, 76% of those receiving the first dose of the vaccine were between the ages of 18 and 50. And if you would track the red line, as you see the upward mo mo movement of the line, you look at the, um, the pale blue, and you see the upward trend uh, of, of, of the uptake of the vaccine over time. Uh, it, it is noteworthy that this uptake is increasing and is expected to continue in the following weeks. We also take note of the data of the uptake among specific professional groups. We really want to, we wish to encourage all who are eligible to take the vaccine to protect yourselves, protect your loved ones, and, pre and prevent the spread of COVID-19, particularly the frontline workers. We are making progress, but we are still in the pandemic. When you look at the incident and cumulative cases by Epi Week, you see that there are 11,552 COVID-19 cases recorded in the Bahamas. The pandemic is not over. Vaccinations continue to play a critical role in preventing the spread of COVID-19. However, health officials remain concerned about the new variants of COVID-19 identified in the United Kingdom, South Africa, Brazil, and India. Studies show that these new variants spread more rapidly and are affecting younger people. The latest data show that nationally, hospitalizations are decreasing, as are ICU admissions. However, we note that COVID-19 is new in its behavior and has changed its properties over the last 15 months. This is no longer a virus that affects your grandmother, your mom, or your dad. It is now infecting younger persons. As you see here, more young people are contracting the virus. More young people are becoming seriously ill. More young people are being hospitalized and some are dying from the virus. We sadly report that there have been a total of 226 COVID-related deaths. Health teams are currently managing outbreaks in the Berry Islands, Cat Island, North and Central Andres, and we're using a model developed by ourselves through, with a strategic combination of contact tracing and aggressive vaccination. On the Berry Islands, the index case originated from a church event there are 24 active cases of the COVID virus on Bullock's Harbor. We must contain the spread of this virus. On the island of Andros, there were nine new cases reported in a single day. This is significant. The health team is presently conducting contact tracing and vaccination on the island at this time. On Cat Island, there are 33 active cases of the COVID-19 virus. 109 residents are in quarantine. Seven of the 13 persons under investigation, under investigation tested positive today. As you look at the map here, the island has a positivity rate of 58%. Seven persons were airlifted to New Providence for urgent medical care, and six remain hospitalized. This slide shows how the virus is affecting 
the younger population, and children under nine years of age. We now have access to the COVID-19 vaccines and treatments to help us fight the transmission of this virus and to support the medical care of COVID-19 cases. We are fortunate to have received COVID-19 vaccines when there is a worldwide shortage. To date, we have received 80, 87,200 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. This includes 20,000 doses from the government of India and 67,200 prepaid through the COVAX facility with the assistance of the Pan-American Health Organization and the Inter-American Development Bank. The Bahamas is also expected to receive an additional 33,600 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine through the COVAX facility by the end of this month. This week, I'm pleased to tell you that we are offering more than 9,000 COVID-19 vaccine appointments. This includes first and second doses. Online appointments are available this week from Tuesday through Friday at the Kendall GL Isaacs 6 National Gymnasium, Loyola Hall, Gladstone Road, Barma, Church of God of Prophecy, East Street, and St. Anselm's Church Hall on Bernard Road. Walk-up appointments are also <coughs> available at the Kendall Isaacs Gym, Barma, Church of God of Prophecy, and St. Anselm's Church Hall. While the transfer of data between digital platforms made it difficult for some to make an appointment for the second dose of their vaccine, help desks have now been set up at each vaccination center to assist those having difficulty making an appointment. We expect this technical glitch to be completely resolved in the coming days, and we appreciate the public's patience and cooperation during this time. As part of our campaign strategy, we will be partnering with various youth and community organizations to encourage uptake of the COVID-19 vaccine. And this coming weekend, on Saturday the 29th of May, we will be partnering with Bahamas Harvest Church, Mount Tabor Church, and New Destiny Baptist Church to host a vaccination blitz. To make an appointment online for one of the Saturday sites, visit vax.gov.bs and click on the site. We are pleased with the progress of the national COVID-19 vaccine campaign. We could not do this without the help of so many healthcare workers, volunteers, civic and religious uh, groups, and members of the public. We are particularly indebted to the efforts of Mr. Ed Fields, who provided logistical support with the Family Island rollout, Mr. Rassen for coordinating the volunteers, and our technical and data lead, Dr. Danny Davis, in addition to all the members of the committee who are working tirelessly to ensure a successful campaign. The public health staff at the Ministry of Health has made this campaign successful through their commitment, dedication, and skill set navigating throughout the archipelago. They are truly to be commended. We appeal to you to continue to follow the Ministry of Health and Office of the Prime Minister's social media platforms for updates on the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines. I thank you. Now, the Honorable Prime Minister.
Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Dal Regis, for your presentation, your service, and your ongoing counsel and advice. Our nation remains grateful to you for all you have done and continue to do. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a small island developing country. Successive administrations over the years have worked to provide health care resources to our many communities and settlements on our many islands. Because some of our neighbors in the region only have one or a few islands, they need fewer public medical facilities. Because of our much larger archipelago, the government of the Bahamas operates approximately 95 clinics throughout the country. As a small country with restraints on our resources, there is limited capacity in the family islands in terms of medical professionals, equipment such as ventilators, and the more sophisticated equipment that would be found in hospitals in larger cities. Because of these limits, as a government, we cannot allow family island outbreaks of the pandemic to get out of control. In these communities, there are no big hospitals or intensive care units. There are limited numbers of healthcare professionals due to small sizes of the populations. Excessive spread of the virus would be catastrophic. Throughout this pandemic, it has been the policy of my administration to protect our family islands. Fellow Bahamians, earlier this week, I announced the lockdowns of Bullocks Harbor and Great Harbor Key in the Berry Islands. Once we observed noticeable viral spread in these communities, we immediately acted to institute restrictions to protect these island residents. As a medical doctor and as prime minister, I will always act aggressively to protect our people. My fixed star is the protection of life. My healthcare team and I have studied responses to this virus from around the world. Some countries waited too late to introduce restrictions at certain times. This has allowed small spreads to turn into tragedies. We will not allow this deadly virus to ravage our family islands. My government has mobilized resources and support for these communities during this restricted period, including food and economic support. I am pleased to confirm that early this morning, the delivery of the government's National Food Distribution Task Force arrived in Bullocks Harbor for the people of Bullocks Harbor and Great Harbor Key during this restricted period. Thank you to members of the private sector that helped us leverage resources for these efforts. Residents of Cat Island, North and Central Andres, fellow Bahamians, in order to protect and to save lives and to slow and control the spread of the COVID-19 today, I wish to announce that Cat Island and North and Central Andres will be placed under a 14-day lockdown, effective tomorrow, Monday, May 24th at 8 p.m. The government is doing so on the advice of our medical experts and team. Residents should pay particular attention to the following provisions included in the emergency powers orders. Travel to and from Cat Island and North and Central Andres is prohibited during the lockdown, except 
for essential workers, Royal Bahamas Police Force, Royal Bahamas Defense Force, healthcare professionals, Bahamas Power and Light Technical Personnel, mailboat and sea corps operators, and commercial bank personnel, or as otherwise approved by the competent authority. There will be no in-person activities permitted. Most regrettably, this also means there will be no burials held during this period. Every agency, business, or establishment shall remain closed except for the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, government community clinics, and COVID-19 vaccination sites. No individual other than an essential worker shall leave his or her place of residence for any purpose other than for the purpose of seeking urgent medical attention to go to a vaccination site or on prescribed days to purchase food, water, and other essential items. The administrator or a designee is permitted to distribute food and water on behalf of the government. The following additional provisions will apply for both North and Central Andres and Cat Island. Food store owners may be permitted to restock their stores after the arrival of the respective mailboat and the Sea Corps. Food stores may be opened for two days between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. after the mailboat has arrived. Residents may leave their homes to go to the food store during the two days, immediately following the arrival of the mailboat only. Farmers are permitted to water their crops between the hours of 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. Subsistence fishing is permitted. The respective commercial banks may reload their automated banking machines. Gas stations may open on Fridays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for government agencies only. Customs and immigration will be able to fulfill their duties as needed. Security guard services will be permitted. Hotel workers carrying identification will be permitted to traverse to and from their places of employment. The following provisions will be unique to North and Central Andres. Harvesting of crabs during the lockdown period is permitted from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Outside of these hours, harvesting of crabs may also be permitted by the Royal Bahamas Police Force officer in charge of that island if the weather is favorable for harvesting. Emil Knowles Construction Company will be permitted to continue working on the government bridge project in Stanyard Creek between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The Autec Navy base will be permitted to continue to operate. The following provisions will be unique to Cat Island. Water delivery shall be permitted daily by Donald Newbold from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. ISD construction work on the government's water project may continue between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The full emergency powers orders will be available on opm.gov.bs. Residents of North and Central Andres and Cat Island, the National Food Distribution Task Force provided food shipments to both Andres and Cat Island late last week. The task force is right now preparing additional food parcels to be shipped 
to both Andres and Cat Island early this week. Ladies and gentlemen, out of an abundance of caution, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force has already dispatched officers to Cat Island and North and Central Andres to ensure that residents are not leaving these areas and risking the greater spread of the COVID-19 virus to other communities and islands. The Royal Bahamas Police Force will provide additional enforcement support on Cat Island and North and Central Andres. I wish to thank in advance the residents of Bullocks Harbor, Great Harbor Key, Cat Island, and North and Central Andres for their cooperation and patience. When the health team advise that it is safe to do so, members of my team and I will visit these communities to thank the residents for their cooperation and to also thank medical personnel, security officials, administrators, food care providers, and other officials and volunteers. Fellow Bahamians and residents, as I have encouraged you before, Bahamians and eligible residents must get vaccinated. If we are to get out of this terrible period in our history, I thank all of those who have taken the vaccine and encourage those who have taken their first dose to also take the second dose. My government has secured doses of a highly effective vaccine. It is free. I am fully vaccinated as is my wife, Patricia. The vaccine is a pathway to ending the emergency phase of the pandemic. The United Kingdom and Israel are world leaders in vaccinations. As a result, these countries are opening up. They are moving beyond the emergency phase of certain restrictions. This is where we want to be. We are all tired of the pandemic. We all want to get back to our normal lives. We all want more business activity. But to get there, more eligible Bahamians and residents must come forward to be vaccinated. Just as we pull together for a national emergency, such as the hurricanes, we remain in this fight together. The government has its role to play, as do businesses, religious and civic institutions, and every citizen. We need Bahamians to quickly get vaccinated so that we can move away from the period of restrictions the vaccine has been proven to protect you from severe illness and death. It will also reduce the likelihood of you catching and transmitting the virus. As the world and countries open up, the vaccinated will have less restrictions. For example, it will be easier to travel if you are vaccinated. Additionally, here in the Bahamas, businesses are creating vaccine policies. Many are urging their employees to do so without mandating it. Sir Roland Saunders, a Caribbean diplomat, recently noted, and I quote, in 2019, even before the novel coronavirus was confirmed, we began and began its spread around the world. The World Health Organization revealed that vaccine refusals had led to a resurgence of diseases such as measles in countries that were close to eliminating them. Indeed, 
The WHO also has stated that the refusal to take vaccines in general is among the 10 major threats to global public health. Sir so Roland concluded, vaccine refusal is fast becoming as dangerous to human health and to economies as the COVID-19 pandemic. He also stated, groups of persons in many parts of the world who declined taking the COVID-19 vaccine now pose a risk to themselves and the people with whom they come into contact, especially their families. They also pose a risk to the opening up of the economies of their countries. Figures confirm that the COVID-19 vaccine prevents severe infection and deaths at astounding rates. In Israel, vaccines have prevented hospitalizations by 94% among adults 65 and older. Sir Roland also stated that infectious diseases expert Dr. Monica Gandhi noted that of over 115 million vaccinated Americans, only 0.0009% contracted severe COVID-19 after vaccination, despite the virus continuing to circulate in their communities. My fellow Bahamians and residents, the actions we are taking to protect the people of Cat Island and North and Central Andres demonstrate in real time why it was critical for the government of the Bahamas to extend the emergency orders just this past week. These measures allow us to be on constant guard. They allow us to act quickly if matters worsen and the numbers go up because this is a fast moving disease. We must have the ability to move just as fast, just as medical staff in accident and emergency need to act quickly to save lives. The emergency orders give us the same ability as emergency room staff. These emergency measures have saved lives and are being recommended by health experts here at home. Similar measures are being utilized throughout the world, recommended by scientists and medical experts. And as I stated last week, only the most reckless and heartless people would recommend the removal of measures that save lives. Only the most reckless and heartless would ignore the medical advice and instead play petty politics with people's lives. If we did not have these emergency measures, more people could get sick and more could die. Those who opposed the emergency orders are playing with people's lives. It is difficult to take seriously those who appear not to understand the necessity for certain emergency orders. My government has been measured with these legal powers. We have continued to ask Parliament for authorization as allowed in our Constitution and our laws. We have only utilized necessary rules to keep Bohemians and residents safe. We use an approach that takes into consideration the conditions of our various islands. Some islands currently have few restrictions in place. While we think it is necessary to extend the emergency measures, let me foreshadow what our future will look like living with COVID-19. When the time is appropriate, guided by our public health experts, we will move to a new regime outside of the current emergency measures. Common sense public health 
rules will remain. However, this regime will in time be phased out. The pandemic is not over. If you ignore it, it will not just go away. We as a people can end this by getting vaccinated. If you are vaccinated, speak with a few people who are close to you, who are not. Do not row with them. Tell them how it went for you. Urge them with love to take the shot so they may live and be protected. COVID-19 is a killer. This is the worst pandemic in 100 years. Take the vaccine and stay alive. We do not want to see people dying because they refused a vaccine that can save their lives. Dear brothers and sisters, I wish again to thank the many religious leaders who have encouraged the members of their faith communities to take the COVID-19 vaccine. May I also recommend to people of faith a presentation by Dr. Reverend Colin Archer entitled, A Christian Scientific Approach to the COVID-19 Virus, which may be found on YouTube. Today, the Christian community celebrates Pentecost. The day after is with Whit Monday holiday. On Pentecost, we commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit to the apostles of Jesus Christ. In chapter 5 of the epistle to Galatians, we are instructed as individuals and as a community of faith to live according to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. May we all seek during this oncoming, ongoing pandemic to live by the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let us ask for the guidance, the blessings, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Let us continue to pray for wisdom and discernment. Hurricane season begins June 1st and lasts until November 30th. I encourage you to begin your annual hurricane preparations. May God bless and keep us. Please have a safe holiday and please abide by the health care measures. Thank you and good afternoon. <laughs>